Senator Chuck Schumer, and if we shouldn't forget, we just did this long discussion about the border bill and why uh, we have disagreements about it, but about why generally why it's dead. Now let's move to the areas of the border bill, which were paired with aid, military aid to Ukraine and to Israel. Senator Schumer had a stunning pronouncement on MSNBC yesterday in his advocacy for the bill, where he said that if the bill is not passed and money is not given to Ukraine, America will regret it because then American troops will have to be sent to fight in Ukraine. Here's what he had to say. Well, if we don't aid uh, Ukraine, Putin will be walk all over Ukraine. We will lose the war. And we could be fighting in Eastern Europe in a NATO ally in a few years. Americans won't like that. If we don't help Israel defend itself against Hamas, that perpetual war will go on and on and on. If we don't help humanitarian aid to the starving Palestinians in Gaza, hundreds of thousands could starve. And the border, everyone has said it's chaos. A speaker, you just saw Speaker Johnson, he said it's mm -hmm. chaos. We have to do something legislative a few months ago. But what has happened, in answer to your, to que your question, so this is crucial for America. It's a turning point. History is going to look over our shoulders and say, did we rise to the occasion? To his credit, Mitch McConnell did. But too many Republicans, yeah. including Speaker Johnson, are just scared to death of Donald Trump. It is insane that <laughs> the way that they act like they would have no choice in the matter. I know. But to send our sons and daughters to die in Ukraine if you don't give them even more money than they've already given. This, and you know what's amazing in this bill that I think it was Michael Tracy mm -hmm. that pulled this out. One of the provisions of the bill is that the Ukraine funding includes that we have to come up with a strategy for Ukraine for the future. Yes. It's like, wait a second. Aren't you supposed to have a strategy already? We've been at this for years at this point, and you're admitting you just literally have no strategy for how this is going to end? Guys, we actually have that. Can we put A7, please, up on the screen? I will read directly from the text of the bill. He says that uh, the House of Representatives will have a strategy regarding the United States support for <coughs> Ukraine oh, against that aggression. That such strategy <coughs> must be provided for a multi-year established specific and achievable mm. objectives defined and prioritized. U.S. national security interests. This will hasten Ukrainian victory against Russian invasion forces. I do want to spend time on this because it's one of the most dishonest things that people who are pro-Ukraine say. They're like, well, if, we, if Ukraine is defeated, then American troops will have to fight. Why? Ukraine's not in NATO. It actually doesn't change anything. If uh, Latvia is invaded, then yeah, that's a different story. Then yeah, we would be in a fight because they're in NATO. Ukraine's got nothing to do with NATO. Ukraine is a former Soviet state, which has no security obligation, zero from the United States. I would also say it is the most stupid argument because it's one of those where it's domino theory in reverse. For example, Crystal, currently the line is to support Taiwan, we have to support Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because if Ukraine falls, then Ta China will be emboldened to support Taiwan, uh, to invade Taiwan. And one, right. my friend Elbridge Colby, Colby always points out, if you think Taiwan is under threat, then you should support weapons to Taiwan and more Navy destroyers in Ch uh, the South China Sea. That has to do with Taiwan. But don't try and do all of this convoluted jujitsu about, well, if this happens and this may happen, which may you know invite somebody to do this. No, 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 Make the argument on its face. And the reason they can't is because the Ukraine war is a failure and a disaster. Since the day of that spring offensive, if you wanna call that, from the Ukrainians, they haven't advanced a single inch of territory. They have squandered probably up to a million of their own citizens. They are currently undertaking a draft, which includes people who are blind, disabled, and barely functional in their 50s, throwing them into a meat grinder. So sad. Begging us for more bullets as they sacrifice their own people. And at the the same time have been completely militarily inept to apply any tactics <coughs> that have even remotely worked in retaking their territory. It's their fault. They decided not to take that peace deal back in 2022, many supported also by the United States. Mm -hmm. And now the two of us are in this you know, death grip where we're watching the failure of our policy just go apart. Zelensky, by the way, I should say, is in free fall. He's firing his top commander. Why? Because the guy admitted to the economist that it's a stalemate. That's why he's firing him. He's, you know- <laughs> For the uh, crime of being honest. The crime of being honest. The, he's uh, firing many top ministers. He's finally allowing some of the tip of the iceberg corruption to come to light. Who 
knows how many billions were squandered and were stolen, you know, by the Ukrainian oligarchs now at this point. The only humanitarian thing and strategically important thing you could do would be to sue for peace as soon as humanly possible. But honestly, at this point, they have squandered their chances such that the Russians just yesterday retook a city. If I were the Russians at this point, because America is so distracted and all this thing, I would take the whole thing. I, I, would, I would roll through the whole country as much as I could. And it's their own fault that they got themselves into this position. You know, good luck with your drones and your F-16s and all that. I mean, it's about men, it's about bullets, and you were never going to be able to do it. I mean, it's really our fault, too, so for sure. pushing them into this war and giving them all the insurance assurances that we would be there forever and we would back them forever and give them what we they needed in order to succeed. So, I mean, our hands are incredibly bloody with this entire conflict. And so I do think it's very revealing that within this uh, document, within this bill, pledging additional support to Ukraine. It's like, oh, and let's also come up with a strategy. Um, the only strategy at this point is how do we possibly get to another place where there can be negotiations and diplomacy yes, because that's, right. that's the only way this is gonna end. And right now it's already a complete disaster. We already missed the best moment that would have achieved for Ukraine the best deal that they were possibly gonna get out of this situation. Right. And that's just the sad truth. Absolutely, and you know, and then they can't complain is that, oh, we sacrificed so many people. It's like, well, welcome to the logic of the first world war. You should have tried to settle it whenever you could. Sad. You should have listened to the wrong it's, guy. Honestly, it's heartbreaking. On Israel as well, there's just, you can't even make some of this stuff up. Let's put this up there on the screen, again flagged by Michael Tracy. He says uh, and points out, <clears throat> all of the $17 billion appropriated for Israel in this bill, any congressional uh, notification requirement applicable to funds made available under this heading in the act for Israel will be waived if the Secretary of State determines so in the national interest of the United States. In other words, it specifically exempts Israel and Ukrainian funding <coughs> from congressional oversight, mm -hmm. meaning that you are not allowed to, as we saw in the past, ask any inquiries about corruption, ask any inquiries about whether this is compliant, this military aid with US law, like for example, violating the Leahy Act and not being misapplied against civilian forces or any oversight whatsoever. So what is the point? How, like imagine Congress coming in and being like, we wanna abdicate our responsibility, but it actually makes sense because they don't wanna know what the right. money and the uh, weapons are being used for. They just wanna turn them over and then look the other way and well, just this, pretend that it doesn't exist. It's just codifying yeah. what has already been been reality Correct. with this White House right. because we've covered how multiple times they've skirted congressional authorization to rush through, they've skirted their own State Department policies to rush through whatever weapons shipments that they want to. So this is just codifying what has already been reality and what the overwhelming majority of members of Congress have already accepted. And to that point, put this next one up on the screen, it also um, has a provision here that would skirt any authorization debate about the ongoing U.S. operations in the Red Sea in Iraq and Syria by simply handing over $2.4 billion to cover those operations, no questions asked. So they wouldn't have to go to Congress for anything, wouldn't have to go, you know, even to ask for additional money to continue these illegal operations, uh, bombing three different countries. This would, you know, tie that up with a bow as well. And uh, by the way, kudos and, and great thanks to Michael Tracy for reading through yeah. the entire bill and pulling out these key provisions, which of course we're not getting covered by the mainstream That's, press. No, I didn't see a single, everyone, yeah, everyone's focusing on the border shit. Sure, we, we did too. We did a whole hour on it just this morning. But guess what? It's not the only thing that's going on in there. All of this is what the national security complex, this is their thing of wildest dreams. Free money, no oversight. It's like the continuation of the Pentagon budgets. And just think about it too. When you fund a foreign war, you may want to know what's actually going on inside of that war instead of issuing empty threats like Senator Schumer did in the beginning. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.